as always, before we get to today's episode, we want to talk to you about our friends at the original Green River. This is one of the finest pops. It's all real sugar, caffeine-free, 0% juice. It's the good stuff. It's very green. It goes well in any kind of cocktail you want to make at home. Lime-based. Limey. Distinctive vinegar green color. That's true, like, like the river. There's very few things more refreshing after a long day of sitting on the couch, talking about movies, watching movies, and a nice splash of Green River, maybe a splash of Cousin Vodka in there, too. Maybe a little bit of a lord. I'm just saying. Like, maybe those three things together. Yeah. Maybe come up with a cocktail. Who knows? One uh, movie that I wouldn't watch that with, because I watched it a lot as a kid, is today's movie, The Sandlot. The Sandlot. A little piece of paradise, a half a block wide, and a whole season long. Babe! 1993 came out just around when I came into this earth. Uh, about, it's really about, so I loved this movie as a kid. I watched it as an adult maybe a year or two ago, and I loved it a hundred times more, which I did not expect. Because it's kind of, kind of a kid's movie, family movie. It's a family movie, yeah. A, about a kid trying to fit in as he moved into a new neighborhood playing baseball. Um, but I, I loved it so much more as an adult. And to the point where I don't even remember why I liked it as a kid. I think just because it's about baseball and I love baseball and I played baseball. I was like, ooh, a baseball movie. Uh, but this movie's really about fitting in and family and friends and, and you know being socially awkward and all this stuff. And I think it's outstanding but for none of the reasons i thought so as a kid which threw me off yeah um i mean i'm i was watching this movie you said 1993 1993 yeah. so um definitely in my formative years um you're literally in your 30s, my, then, right? yeah in my 30s in my 30s um like i feel like i could have been one of the characters in that's the why movie. Like, that's why that's when i was watching it was like at that time everyone could even, even if you're not a dude who played sports Everyone, I think, can identify with someone in a social, the social dynamic of the kids playing baseball. Because while... Or just the movie in general. Like, I, yeah. I identify with Wendy Pfefferkorn. <laughs> yeah. uh, while, like, Smalls is the protagonist and he doesn't fit in. He's, like, the outcast and he's, like, really trying to fit in. You could fit in with Hamilton Porter. You could fit in with Benny. You could fit in with anybody. The dog. The dog. The <laughs> And Joel Jones. <laughs> there was, we just all grew up in a neighborhood, and I don't know about kids now. You have kids. Uh, I don't know if they still go out and play with other kids in the neighborhood and skin their knees and hop scotch and light firecrackers off. But I literally was. I, th- that's the first thing I wrote on here is, and I want to ask you because, like, I mean, I know like I've got kids and like maybe closer to it, but like I want to ask the question: Do kids go out and play sports anymore? Like so, for fun? Like get out and like. Let's go play pick up basketball or pick yeah. up baseball or whatever. Or is it like, are they literally just playing Fortnite and Among Us? I don't know. And your kids probably aren't old enough to even gauge that yet, I would say. No. But for me, in the 90s, like, in our coldest act that we grew up in, there were kids about my age, about my brother's age, about my sister's age. And we played pick up baseball in the court. All the, it was. It feels when I think about this memory, it feels like the 1960s or something. Cause it's just so dated. Mm-hmm. Where we would have one mailbox be first base, second base, third base, home plate. Parents in the cul-de-sac would have we sitting in lawn chairs and kind of watching on their lawn. We'd have plastic bats, play with a tennis ball so we didn't break any windows, and like everybody in the neighborhood would play this game. But the parents were your parents were there. They were there because we were playing right in front of the house. So, like, there's, there's the element that, like, for me growing up was totally different. Uh, for me growing up, it was literally, like, all right, Mom, I'm going over to David's house. See you later. And, like, that was it. Like, I'd go out and we'd go and play basketball in his driveway or he'd come over to my driveway and we'd play basketball there. Or, like, all right, Mom, I'm going to go play uh, street hockey with the guys and, like, get on my well, bike with the equipment and go ride and go do that. And, like, they're – Parents were not there, and my parents were just like, and their parents weren't there, my parents weren't, no parents were there. It was just like us kids, and just to the point where it's like, all right, literally, like, I know it's, I know it's a meme, you know, uh, it goes all over Facebook, right? But it's like, if you grew up with, you know, like your parents telling you be home before the streetlights came on, like, 
you get it. Like, you're okay. Sure. Like, whatever. Like, well, but that's literally it. Like, before the streetlights came on, that was when we had to be home. The, what I referenced was probably, like, I was, like, first, second, third grade. When I got a little bit older, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was playing, like, touch football with my friends. My parents just said be home by, like, dinner time. I would go ride my bike. Yeah. Then in high school, I played pickup basketball all the time. Um, so we're still outdoors all the time, and this is going to make me and you sound like we're 65-year-old Tucker Carlson viewers, but I really don't know if kids are still doing things outside or if they're just on their iPhones, yeah. on their iPads, on, doing dances on TikTok with bang energy. I really hey, bang, don't give know. give us a call. If you want us, yeah, we're if, on TikTok. If you, too, if so. We'd love to have you uh, sponsor us if you'd like to sponsor. We're on TikTok. Yeah, I'm not, TikTok. I'm not beneath that. I'm just saying I don't know if kids... Like, if kids would even watch this movie and then, like, have that connection to it. Yeah. Of, like, the social dynamic of, like, is there ever a kid that moves into a neighborhood and feels the pressure to go join the local pickup baseball game? Yeah. I, I mean, I get that. Like, I mean, I know, like, thinking about my kids and whether, like, they, they love to spend time outside. So, like, if we go in the backyard, right, they got, like, a little swing set with, like, a playhouse, and they want to play, like, cool, no big deal, like, kick a soccer ball around or go walk around the block, ride scooter or whatever. Do they play with any kids in the neighborhood? They do sometimes, but, like, it's organized. Like, it, mm. it's to the point of, like... And I know there are some kids in the neighborhood that they have older siblings, so, like, by that point, like, the parents are just kind of like, okay, yeah, go do whatever you want to do, right? But, like, if my kid wants to play with the kid across the street, usually what happens is, is, like, the kid across the street comes and is like, hey, you want to do... You want to play date? You like, you want to play, like come over to my house or I'll come over here or like, or whatever, or like talk about it at school. Like, Hey, I want to have a play date with so-and-so. Yeah. I mean, my parents organized that stuff. I think when I was super young, but we had a, a kid move into our neighborhood when I was like five, maybe five or six. And my mom encouraged me, like made me, I was so nervous to do it. So he ended up being a good friend of mine when we were growing up, but said, go over to the house and ring the doorbell and ask if the, the boy who moved in, uh, if he can, if he can play, like introduce herself. My mom, like, made me do that. Yeah. And it was good. It was good for me to, like, go out and do that. Um, but I can't imagine that now when, like, let's just, like, have it's, parents text each other and yeah. figure it out. I, I mean, know. it's a totally different thing, too. And, like, the ki- like, some kids have phones and stuff where that makes it, like, a total other element. But, like, I remember growing up, like, if I wanted to go and play with my one friend, like, down the street, like, I would literally get on my bike, ride down the street to his house, and ring the doorbell, not knowing if he was home, not knowing if he was available to play, not knowing if he was grounded. Yeah, like, you know, same. Like same. that was like some of the. Sometimes I would you'd do go, that like, and go, the bell. and he'd be like, "Yeah, he's gar- he's grounded. Yeah, he's grounded. He can't he can't play today." And it's like okay, and then I'd get back on my bike and go home, or like, like you we didn't know, or like I mean even the like awkwardness of like calling somebody right, or like having somebody call your house, where like caller ID was not really a thing, and so like you didn't know who it was, yeah. you couldn't like screen it or anything like that it was just like oh hey what's going on yeah okay let's go do this like so if you're a kid call in and let us know uh i don't want to just survey random kids and talk to kids and see what they're doing but because we sound like curmudgeons right now but i just i don't know i generally Honestly, just like, assume kids are all on tiktok and playing fortnite well so like for for our, for the younger viewers because i imagine that we probably have a wide range it's of, the kid of, show. of folks uh, but like those that uh, are recently becoming uh, of legal uh, warring age, as I like to call it, they're newly 18 because they can now go to war and go fight for uh, our country. Uh, can't do anything else, but you can do that. Uh, what was it like for you growing up? Were you in the same boat where like you would literally go to the door and do that? I, honestly, I don't know. Like, But okay, here's another question though. Even if that isn't a thing, the concept of fitting in. This is why the movie resonated with me so much as an adult because I had lived a full childhood and grown up and had different versions of myself come and go. Just the idea of trying to fit into a group that already existed and being the new kid. Mm-hmm. Although I've ne- I was never really the new kid in, in life. Beside, but you always have that situation where you're trying to fit into a group. You go away to college, you join a club, anything. I think that feeling that Smalls is going through is still relatable even if you didn't have this childhood dynamic even if you're not like a total social butterfly which yes. i'm not saying that like, either of us are really like like introverts necessarily I, but I like i'm an introvert you know like 
being an introvert, like, even if you're not an introvert, even if you're an extrovert, like, and you're going, like, there's still some, like, awkwardness to that. You're yeah. like, I, man, I don't really want to go and, like, ask somebody new to go do something. Like, that's awkward. Yeah. But I think having actually lived a childhood, the movie makes more sense to me as opposed to watching it as a child and not understanding the range of, not comprehending the emotions. I had the anxieties when I was young about fitting in, but I didn't comprehend any of that until I became an adult. So now the movie's way better. Yeah. I always thought, even as a kid and now as an adult too, the chewing tobacco. It's plugged! What? Chewing tobacco? Tobacco, man. What do you do with it? You're killing me, Smalls! Which I didn't even get at the time. I didn't really understand why are they getting nauseous from the chewing tobacco. What's chewing tobacco? Is it really that bad? Is it the same like smoking? I think that's hilarious. And also something that people can probably rela relate to, even if they didn't chew tobacco as a kid. But some substance that you shouldn't have taken. You drank a beer when you were in high school and you threw up, something like that. Um, I think that's, that's hilarious. I think, um, well, the lifeguard... So real quick about the chewing tobacco, I just want to no like even even though like i know it makes it seem like i'm like this like crazy old like there's a big age difference or whatever there's really not but like i remember uh when i was in grade school playing football and uh, so our practice field was here and then just down the street was a gas station and we had a coach who had a deal with the gas station people and sometimes like during practice if he was like pissed at somebody or like wanted to let somebody go he'd like give him some cash and be like, go get me some chaw. Oh, and so like yeah. the kid would go and like would go to the gas station and would come back with a tin um, and give the coach the tin. That's so and, funny. And like it was a whole thing. And like and I remember too, like why I would have any like knowledge of this is beyond me, but the like, to like, to like everyone the tin, right? Everyone like, in, my, in my high school did that. Even if you didn't have any, uh, have any chew, um, everyone was just doing this all the fucking time because it's got a thing to do. It became like a nervous tick. Yeah. Uh, did you ever try it? Uh, yes, once or twice, but like not. I've never. It was one of those things where it was like not cigarettes right. to me because yeah, I, I wouldn't expect it to. But um, like growing up, we just it was so established that this is horrible. This is a horrible thing for you to do. Like it was like cigarettes to me. And I got to high school, and then there were like a few people on the baseball team that did it. I was like, that's weird. Don't, isn't this, like, established as, like, a disgusting habit? Yeah. But I think there was something about it that's, like, this is cool. Like, especially during this time in the 60s, it's, yeah. like, you're, like, the pros. You're, like, you're like Babe Ruth, which yeah. is another thing I want to... The pool scene, also hilarious. This magic moment. <laughs> so Little pervert! Oh, man, he's a deep shit. I think, uh... For those of you at home, we record a few of these in a day sometimes, and it's kind of funny that today we've reviewed Revenge of the Nerds, 40-Year-Old Virgin, Sandlot, and there are three scenes that have a rapey vibe in all three of them yep. in a very similar way uh -huh. um, with the uh, tricking a lifeguard into giving you mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Maybe because it's harmless and they're kids and it's not and she And she sexual. reacts like... She reacts the appropriate... She reacts the appropriate way, way and he yeah. like kind of reacts the appropriate way to sort of, but then is also kind of like, man, I can't believe I did that and got away with it. Like, th I feel like it's not like, I don't, like I'm not condoning that type of behavior, but like at the same time, it's also like it's not, it's not on the same it's level. It's way more as, innocent. Yeah, it's not on the same level as Revenge of the Nerds, and it's not on the same level as like in Forty Year Old Virgin. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. The same like rapey feel. The third it. really funny scene is the s'more scene. Hey, you want a s'more? S'more what? No, 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 you want a s'more. I haven't had anything yet. So how can I have some more of nothing? Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. Which is still quotable. It's like, do you want some more? I haven't had any yet. It's a dad joke. Yeah, is it in, it's a great one. Uh -huh. I, love I, I use that joke. with my kids, too. And like, your kids like, have no s'mores? idea what it is. And yeah. I'm like, some more what? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And, it, and at that point, they're starting to accept him more, too, but he's still awkward. I think this 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 film just nails all of the uh, the range of emotions between kids like that. Um, now the premise of losing the baseball and struggling to get it back. First of all, the thing I had down in my notes here, this struck me as kind of weird, but I don't know if it's weird. Babe Ruth retired twenty seven years before this movie took place. <clears throat> is it really realistic that he still 
to them like this le- like none of these kids were alive when Babe Ruth played well, weren't even guess... remotely close to being alive when Babe Ruth played I thought about this because Michael Jordan retired for the, the first the, the time we acknowledge not the Wizards time 23 years ago well I still feel I feel like the difference is is there a discussion an active discussion about this person compared to somebody else so, for example, the only reason why the kids nowadays know about Michael Jordan is because everybody compares LeBron but that's the thing. to Michael Jordan. So I, I remember Jordan a little bit in the last three, Pete, and I'm a Bulls fan and grew up in Chicago, so I think it's different. But if – and I'm older than 23 years ago. But if you were – if you're 23 and under, I think you think of LeBron – for sure. Away. Yeah. And not you, yeah. you don't actively think about Michael Jordan. So at the time, Babe Ruth is still in the record books, the greatest baseball. Well, he still is by wins above the place. He was in 60 what? 60 something? 66, I think. I wrote down, tw- I looked it up. I so wrote down is, he retired is, 27 is years Hank before. Aaron he has, at this point? He has not broken the record yet. Yeah. So, and even by wins above replacement, Babe Ruth is still the greatest baseball player of all time. He's a pitcher too. Yeah, he, like he, the stats that he compiled versus the rest of the league at the time is ridiculous. Is it weird that these kids are all teenagers and are admiring a player that retired twenty seven years before that present day? I mean, it seems a little odd, but again, I, who knows what the parents are talking about? Like the parents, are like, oh, guess. Babe Ruth is the best player I ever but saw. But this is even like, before the internet, though. Yeah. So it's not even like you can go look up the stats, look up highlights on YouTube or anything. I just mean like the parents, right? Like. I don't know. Like it's word of mouth. That, that strikes me as kind of odd. Yeah. Like I would, I, I would, Babe Ruth retired long before our li- lifetimes. I have a uh, authentic Babe Ruth jersey that I think is awesome. I, I think he's ridiculous, but I have the internet. I have like the advantage of that yeah. stuff. I think if I was a kid in the 60s, I would, I don't know, think the way of Mickey Mantle or, I don't know, Joe DiMaggio or so. I don't know. That yeah. just, that kind of threw me. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, one thing I do want to add just before we get close to wrapping it up here is, uh, apparently a childhood classmate sued the writer of this movie uh, because he said that Squints was actually him and it was, a, it was derogatory and it brought him shame huh. um, he lost the suit and uh, it's only because like he said that because their last names were very similar in the movie to oh, his that's real funny. life that's but he funny. lost the suit anyway so. did he know that he knew the, the yeah they grew up oh, together yeah. oh, it so. sounds like he probably has a case um, and then uh, apparently there were two sequels, and yes, one so of them was Luke to. Perry, and now there's a Disney Plus uh, uh, series announced. We're going to do a whole episode based on bad sequels that came out long after the original, but I saw Sandlot 2. Fucking sucked. This spring, welcome back to the Sandlot. It was so bad. It was worse than you could ever imagine. Uh, but Like Coming to America? I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to watch it. Uh, last thing before we, we give it, we score it. Back to the, the baseball. Could this whole movie have just been solved if they just sucked it up and rang the doorbell? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that would be the lo- logical thing to do, right? Yeah. Be a, little, be a little brave. Anyway, I think it. I think this holds up better than any movie we've ever watched. I actually think it aged like fine wine. Yeah. I think it's better than it was in 1993. I agree. Yeah, 100%. IMDb holds score... Up. Uh, we're guessing the score of the movie. I'm going to go relatively high. I'm going to go 7 6. Oh man, 7 6. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go 6 9. Sex. Nice. nice. 7 8. Whoa! Oh, I like that. Man, oh man. That's. Oh boy. I think that well might be deserved. That, that might be the highest yeah. rated one we've ever done. Holy shit. Goodness gracious. All right. Well, Sandlot. The Sandlot.